Welcome to another Warcraft Theory Play! Yay! Oh, it's been too long, I apologize. Um, But don't worry, I'm working on a schedule. It's in a spreadsheet, it's got colors and everything. It's gonna be fantastic, and when it's all said and done, uh, hopefully, well, I've been scheduling in, like, times where I have open to cast, so... Uh, I'm still limited by the fact that I'm, I'm sharing a room and so uh, is but but now I know where I can go Okay, these are the times that I know I'll have a block of time I can do a replay so just so you know just like a little update mini update uh, So that's good. So within the next week or two there should hopefully we're hopefully moving towards consistent content I've, said, I've been saying that for a long time, but we're making progress now uh, Anyway, so let's go ahead and get into this game. This is one game. I there's I think it's a best of five It's for a cup. I, I think I'm just like a the letter a cup between two very good players, we have Nicker spawning in as the Teal Night Elf in the upper right corner of the map. And then down in the lower left, we have Warchief Rich, who's been getting pretty good results lately. Uh, he did really well recently in the Open War 3 Cup, which is just fantastic. Another thing uh, is that he is Orange Night Elf, and I don't know if I said that. So I'm going to point that out. He's going with the Demon Hunter first. And of course, this is actually Night Elf Mirror, and both players are going to go Demon Hunter first. So that's pretty reasonable. The map is, as you can tell, uh, Amazonia. <laughs> my my brain didn't want to work there. Both players, it looks like, well, yeah, both players are scouting. Nicker scouting with a slightly later wisp here, but he's coming on down. He's he's going to move down here and do something. Both players, of course, are AOW creeping. Uh, and let's see how this actually ends up affecting what, what happened. Well, I guess what we're looking for really is going to be the item drops right now. Uh, more so than speed of creeping. Both players are going to creep at about the same speed here. Should not be too much difference. This, of course, is got a really nice lightning shield use. This one's not a bad lightning shield use either. Uh, you don't want the lightning shield to take the, the last hit, especially not if the demon hunter's out. But either way, if the, la the lightning shield takes the last hit, then you don't get experience. So Rich is going to get the ring of protection plus two. And Nicker is going to get the Claws of Attack plus 6 and start his Hunter's Hall right there at the Goblin Laboratory. A very nice usage to do this because when you're doing this, it means that you can kind of go ahead and use that laboratory whenever you want. It's kind of like placing a farm there. Uh, and of course, the, the Hunter's Hall is just one of those buildings. Instead, we're going to see Rich, though, going for the base block. So he's going to walk his Ancient of War back to be right around here. And go ahead and do that. Should have no problems with that. And he's going to chase down one of these wisps. It will have her go into a little spot that cannot be attacked by the demon hunter. He could maybe move an archer over there. But he wants to use that archer to do something slightly more important. Which is go ahead and scout out the map a little bit. And see exactly what's going on. And we might have an archer versus archer right there. But we also have a demon hunter versus demon hunter. However, uh, it turns out that they're not really wanting to engage. Or at least one of them isn't. You're just going to see a couple of mana burns going off right there. And Nicker is ahead in terms of mana by about 20. Which is enough for him to have a second mana burn. Now, it's not necessarily a big deal to have a second mana burn because the only thing it really means is that you probably have more health. Uh, and in this case, we're not going to really see much of a difference there because neither player, I mean, they're both so high up on life, they're about to be full life, uh, and just from regeneration, they can probably end up getting there. Now we're going to go ahead and see a nice reveal for this archer, for Nicker, he's going to have to run that back towards his base. Uh, of course, we're going to see now that Nicker's going to chase the other archer, just basic micro stuff going on, uh, pretty much as you would expect in the early game, but we're moving towards some very interesting moves. For example, one, we have a Huntress out, which is very interesting, he's going to go ahead and try to save that archer, not quite good enough, to, or well, not quite able to, uh, <laughs> he's a good player, I'm not trying to say anything, but one of the cool things here is that Nicker did pick up the Dust of Appearance, so he has that available for him, and also it means that Rich cannot buy it from the shop right here, at least not for a little bit. Also, I should probably turn Terrain on. Uh, I had it off when we were casting FFA, like yesterday or two days ago. Been casting some FFA with uh, the people over at FML Masters. There'll be a link on the screen somewhere to their YouTube channel, so check it out. There's like all kinds of content we've been doing. Uh, it's great, it's wonderful. They also do just wonderful content, uh, so that's like a little plug. As we can see, a fight though going on. Both players have a Huntress out right now. Two Huntresses out for each player as well into this fight. Nicker, however, he's losing it just a little bit. His Demon Hunter is, in fact, lower on the HP there, and he's gonna have to run away. Uh, there is a potential reveal coming in anytime there is a Wisp right there, so it could happen, uh, but he wants to maybe go for the creep. 
feet first, get the experience that he can definitely get. Uh, and will he get that experience? He actually did not. He had it stolen by Nicker with that Huntress. Really good move. And let's see how that looks, uh, how that impacts our hero's experience. So this is, oh, well, let's let's look at Rich's hero then. He is sitting on 370 experience and Nicker is sitting on 332. So he just trying to keep himself in the game by getting those little last cutesy last hit steal uh, steals on creeps, which is very useful to do, very beneficial, and if you can manage that, then you're in pretty good shape. Down here we can see that Richie has had to go back to his base to heal up. Of course, Nicker is actually sitting over here, and he is just waiting for the Ancient of Wonders to pop up. He's not really wanting to use his Moonwall mana yet. He's getting the Keeper of the Grove as his second hero. For Rich, he has not picked a second hero yet. It might be a Tavern hero at some point. However, he does have a Shredder. Do both players have a Shredder? I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing only one Shredder, and it looks like Rich has the Shredder, uh, and Nicker has decided he does not want a Shredder, which is fair enough. Uh, which is a little bit odd, because Nicker is definitely going for a double Ancient of Lore strategy, and you can generally tell that with the Keeper of the Grove second. Generally, you get that with uh, Bears and Dryads, uh, which is a pretty wood intensive strategy, but you don't need a Shredder for that. If you have enough Wisps uh, on Lumber, you'll be just fine. Uh, it's, it's a very fine balance. I don't know the exact number of wisps that you need, but there's a certain number that you can have. Uh, and it kind of changes depending on how the game goes out, because you might have to use them for detonations um, and such. But they're pretty good anyway. And of course, you can see, let's just look from Nicker's point of view. Like, you can just kind of see how much uh, vision is being revealed by the wisp right here. I can't quite tell because he's moving units. But over here, for example, gives them a really key important area of vision. Because as you can see, they almost a little over half of this area is revealed. Uh, and you can kind of tell that how that would be important because it's a creep that you can find out. You can see a lot of those wisp positions are very much strategic creeping placements. However, we can see that he's trying to go for this round on Rich's Demon Hunter. Not going to be able to quite pull it off, even with the Entangle. Would have been a three units round using the trees. Would have been quite nice, but again, just not quite capable to get that off. Uh, and pretty good nonetheless. So let's go back into Observer View. And... Nicker wants to go ahead and maybe start Ancient of War creeping a little bit up here at this potential expansion spot for him. He might be able to grab that. And down here we're going to see Warchief Reach deciding to pull out the Goblin Shredder as an actual combat unit at this point. And he did eventually go for the Keeper of the Grove. It was just a little bit late as well as those second Ancient of Lore. History of Eternity, however, I think is a little bit faster. Indeed it is a little bit faster. So he's going to have later tech. Slightly later tech, but uh, faster tier 3 tech, so that should be interesting. And he's coming in here to fight this. And of course, using that Shredder is actually a lot of damage. It is 34 to 61 damage on every hit. And with the Entangle, you can actually, even though it's kind of a slow moving unit, but it can go ahead and get a lot of damage off. Uh, and so that's actually quite fantastic. So on top of being able to get a lot of extra wood early on, he's going to be able to use that as a combat unit at this point. However, one Huntress will go down, a second one will go down to the Entangle. And he'll be able to take that, uh, the Ancient of War down, and finish off this creep camp with the two Forest Troll Trappers right there. Which is a pretty good, pretty good thing to go ahead and do. It's a, that was a pretty good creep jack. If we look at the Keeper of the Grove experience, you can see 91 for Rich. And over here for Mr. Nicker, 122. So definitely going to say that Nicker was able to go ahead and pull ahead in terms of experience right there. 443 on Nicker's Demon Hunter and... 638 on Rich's Demon Hunter. So I guess it's just spread out differently. Now, if we look at this map, we can see that if Rich goes ahead and creeps out this spot, uh, it would be really fantastic for him, for Nicker, to go ahead and creep out this spot right here, or maybe something down here. Just something on uh, on Rich's side would put him at a pretty big advantage because this has been crept out or not necessarily a big advantage but it would kind of even it out a little bit because this has been crept out for him on his side of the map uh, and now so both players are kind of like one creep down on their side of the map while Rich is working or while Nicker is working on his second creep down on his side of the map so in that sense that's kind of like this sort of um an idea of map control where you can where you can split the map like that and kind of see now rich is really very liberally using his uh his moon walls here to keep that demon hunter alive not even halfway through the first or this well this third day i think we're on uh but i think i think we'll see that nicker has also done so actually he's, you know he's managed to use quite a bit uh he wasn't doing that earlier he's being a little more careful but which I find a little strange because maybe he was using it on the bears. I didn't quite see, but I doubt it. It looks like he didn't. Probably just on his heroes. Uh, but once you have rejuvenation out, you can be a little bit more careful about that. So I'm not going to question what they did. I'm sure what they did was completely reasonable. But 
I mean, obviously in the case of Rich, right, his bears had a little while to come out. They're out now. And so now, you know, I allow them to creep a little bit faster. So absolutely wonderful and good use. But just a little bit risky almost. Um, almost. It's, I don't know if it is. Uh, if you know, because you know that your opponent's probably not going to be attacking you anytime soon. So in, in that sense, I guess it's not really risky. Uh, but, so there you go. Maybe that's what they're both thinking. Like, you know, I know that we're not going to be fighting each other's in each other's base anytime soon. At most, there might have been a creep jack or some kind of map control fight. Uh, but it was a pretty even in terms of map control thing. Rich may be slightly ahead, so... Maybe, maybe Nick or even slightly ahead, I don't know. But anyway, we have a fight coming in. And in fact, we're going to see a mana burn onto Rich's Keeper of the Grove, of course. Wonderful to go ahead and try to keep the mana down. This has been a little bit unfortunate for this bear. He's been caught in Entangle and he hasn't been able to get into bear form. Although he didn't quite have the mana for that either. I don't, I don't think he got burned for that. But he may well have, because uh, this Keeper of the Grove for Nicker has been able to maintain almost all of his life. Uh, he's got his Demon Hunter running away with the Invernability Pot. Had to pop that as well. Uh, this has gone pretty well for Rich, as you can see. Uh, I, I, I don't know if he came out ahead in terms of in terms of actual like econ economic he might have lost a couple more units uh, I'll, ha I'll have to look at that in here in a second but he's definitely been able to, to win the fight in the sense that he gets the map control which is definitely something to be considered uh, and now he just kind of lost that so <laughs> being forced to TP out uh, I don't know if he needed to TP out right there but I guess he wanted to not have to run away uh, from the from the entangles and such things and the slows from the dryads and he lost a bear during the TP as well. So let's look at the food counts. You can see for Nicker, he is sitting at 50 out of 50, which is a pretty good spot to be sitting on. And Rich is sitting at 38 out of 50. Um, going up to 45, and if we check the racks over here for Nicker, you can see one bear versus a bear and a dryad. So uh, definitely, definitely a little bit favorable for Nicker, as well as the fact he got the TP, which is absolutely wonderful. He'd already dealt with his TP at one point throughout the game. Uh, so that kind of helps catch him up in that sense, and uh, I, you know, I uh, both heroes are pretty reasonable. Level three, about to level four on Rich's Demon Hunter, and level three, not quite level four, but you can see. Th I, well, actually, no, yeah, yeah. I would say that Rich is definitely winning the experience battle, as you can see that uh, both the Keeper of the Grove is very similar in the amount of XP, but a pretty big difference on Rich's Demon Hunter over Nickers, uh, which is just fantastic for him. If you look at the upgrades, you can see one zero on Rich's and one one on his opponents. So that is going to potentially pose a problem should he want to fight anytime soon. Uh, and he's that, he's just begun his first armor upgrade, as you can see. So that's not going to really be leveling out anytime soon. If we look over here, if we can find it. Yeah, he is working on uh, his second attack upgrade for Nicker, but the battle has begun. Both players going ahead and entangling and then uh, sub substantially or subsequently abolishing the bears from those entangling roots. You can see just melee fights are very interesting. It's because you don't, the idea is almost that you want to clump up as many units as you can to attack one a unit to kind of focus down. One bear going down for Nicker, a second bear very low, <coughs> second bear going down for Nicker. This is a pretty good fight so far for Rich. He's definitely getting the good positioning, uh, but that is a really bad position for that bear and it's going to go down. <coughs> and here we can just see that, in fact, Nicker's Keeper of the Grove has been forced out of the fight, and Rich has been able to keep his Demon Hunter in the fight. This Keeper of the Grove was chased back to the base, uh, but didn't really manage to do anything. And that fight went quite well for Rich. And let's just look at the food counts. Rich sitting at 49 food versus 43 for Nicker, and he's got very low HP on some of these guys, so he needs to get those bears there for those rejuvenations. Here we can see that the Demon Hunter for Nicker is in a little bit of trouble, gonna have to get Staff back to base. Goes ahead, you really want to always, you know, use the Moonwell mana on the Druid of the Claws. That way when they can, they can just cast Rejuvenation, it's a little bit more efficient. Well, it's quite a bit more efficient than just using your hero, especially because your hero will soak it up with mana. Which you don't want to quite be doing if you can avoid it. A scroll of healing on the Demon Hunter for Rich. He's gonna just kind of suicide a Dryad for some reason. I don't know. Maybe that was to try to abolish uh, some important rejuvenations. It may well have been, and it might it might have even gotten one, which would be a pretty big deal at this point in the game, because Nicker is really running low on mana. So if he can get that, I I didn't quite see it, but if he did, that would be wonderful. Rich is a little over, about halfway through level 4 on his Demon Hunter versus not even level 4 on Nicker's Demon Hunter. That's a pretty big deal, but it looks like both Keeper of the Groves pretty even again still somehow at level 3. 
And here we can see Nicker going for this mercenary camp creep up here, while uh, Rich takes the other mercenary creep camp. They might lead into this red camp. Both players could definitely creep it. They got enough bears at this point. It's a little bit of a painful melee cramp, uh, camp to creep because it does have that big AoE, but you certainly can do it, especially if you use dryads properly. Because dryads, if you pull with a dryad, they won't get stunned. So that's kind of useful. Uh, it means you can pull it out a lot more and then abuse the AI a whole lot more, which is always wonderful. Can't quite do that as well with other units because they'll just get stunned when you pull them out. Then you can see that it's going to take two slams. Not really great. Uh, and Rich is actually not going to go for the red camp. It's, it is a little risky. It takes a lot of your mana. And if you get creep jacked on it, then that's just... You're, you're, you're in a lot of trouble. But, Nicker could see with his wisps, or this ward right here, and he knew that he was safe to do it, and he was behind, so it was worth the risk, really, regardless. Uh, and then, like I said, it wasn't really even a risk because he knew where the opponent was. Picking up some really nice items, uh, having a Cadgar's Pipe of Insight is just wonderful. It's going to give you mass amounts of mana on all those bears. It lets you have a whole lot more rejuvenations, and the longer this game goes, it's gonna, that one item can actually change the game quite a bit. Uh, anyway, but as you can see, this fight is absolutely just going to go on. Uh, lots of, again, more of the bear versus bear, and the Entangle is just reigning supreme right now. Of course, we actually see some illusions being used quite really nicely uh, by Nicker going on there. And just good staff usage, a lot of Entangles. I mean, at this point, there's not enough Dryads really in the fight to go ahead and cancel or deal with those Entangles. Demon Hunter is getting very low right now. Both Demon Hunters are in fact, and actually Rich's Demon Hunter is going to go down. We're going to see some more of those Dryads being picked off, uh, but that's really not good for Rich. And now his Keeper of the Groves actually in a bit of trouble. Will it go down as well? He's going to have to get out of there somehow. He's going to run away with the Rejuvenation and the Abolish on it just in time for that to be pretty much as he's running away. So... Rich right there, he's capable to now just go back to his base. He's got a lot of bears, he's got a lot of units, but his hero has actually gone ahead and died. So this is a really bad situation for, for him to be in. And as you can see, he definitely lost that fight. Uh, he he kind of maybe came out ahead in terms of bear count, but again, without your hero there, it's just massively uh, going to be problematic for him. And just that D1 Hunter for Nicker now sitting at level 4. Uh, this one, of course, is sitting pretty high as well, level 5, but he's dead. Uh, so that's... That's not good. Um, it's really not good. Losing it was a big deal. Uh, this is one of the problems of not carrying TPs. If you're carrying a TP, you're generally not going to lose your Demon Hunter. But you never know, right? Finding the money for that can be hard. Uh, but here we're going to go ahead and see. And it looks like, in fact, Nicker is going to go ahead and work on getting to the red camp, perhaps. And just go ahead and creeping that out. It looks like he will. He's going to be able to get a creep jack on this Ancient of War. I guess it's not a creep jack, but he's going to be able to take that Ancient of War down. And there's really, there's no way to contest them at this point. Without your Demon Hunter alive, especially because he's ultra reviving it, uh, just, what are you going to do? And this is kind of crazy. Is he actually going to try to creep jack him right now? If he tries to creep jack him and he gets fought or caught out in the open and doesn't get creep jack, which is what it looks like is going to happen, this could work out really bad. He doesn't have a TP. He doesn't have the Demon Hunter here. I, you know, the fight's going to even start. Is he actually going to take this fight? He has a scroll of healing, but that, but that's all he has. And in fact, he's going to try to take this fight. I guess he's trying to rely on that bear advantage. I don't even know if he has that at this point. And you can just see he's not getting a good position here. Uh, the Shredder just got picked down. A bear got picked down. Uh, and he's just having massive amounts of troubles here. Here comes a Wisp in from Nicker to go ahead and start dispelling maybe uh, some just anything. He can get rid of mana. Uh, and in fact, that Keeper of the Grove is getting a little bit of a per bad position here. He's kind of in the center of an army. Uh, he's a little close to that Keeper of the Grove. Maybe could end up getting an Entangle Surround. However, that probably won't happen. I mean, I guess he's done okay. He's Done. He's actually done phenomenal in this fight, all things considered, because he doesn't have a Demon Hunter. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's he's given a lot of XP, and oh, he just got surrounded. Oh no, here comes the Demon Hunter. However, he's entangled. He can't staff him. No. In fact, that's the good game. Well, what a game. That was game number one. We've got a couple more games. Well, up to five. I think it's I think it's best of five. So we're going to go through all those games, uh, and hopefully you guys will enjoy them. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Uh, so if you enjoyed it, Thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!